So let's actually talk about what I wanted to talk about. So Roe v. Wade was overturned. And uh, what does that mean? Well, it means a number of things. It means that in any state that had trigger laws to ban abortion the minute it was overturned, abortion is very likely on the chopping block or already banned in several states like uh, Louisiana and Missouri. Regardless on, you know, wh where you believe life begins, whether at conception, a certain at heartbeat, brainwave, or at birth, regardless of where you believe life and personhood begins, you have to acknowledge that lives are put at risk because of this. Because an abortion is a medical procedure that can guarantee saving the life of some people. You know, uh, like... Uh, septic uterus, you can, the only solution is an abortion. Uh, some miscarriages where all the tissue is not removed by the body will also be, you know, you will need an abortion before you get, before it gets infected, you know. And now you can't get those under, you know, no circumstances in some states like Louisiana. Not to mention just the mental harm that's going to come from this. Because, again, in Louisiana and uh, Missouri, you are not allowed to have an abortion and must carry the baby if you are sexually assaulted or or part of an incestuous relationship. And uh, I'm not joking about that. That is just uh, that is just something that has happened. A few days before. Uh, Roe v. Wade was even, you know, overturned. Governor John Bell Edwards of Louisiana signed a bill with no exceptions for rape or incest into law. And uh, WRKF of Baton Rouge uh, put out the story Wednesday uh, about what happened Tuesday. Governor John Bill Edwards signed sweeping legislation Tuesday that would criminalize abortion in Louisiana and ban the procedure in nearly all circumstances from the moment of implantation of Roe v. Wade is overturned. The legislation does not include exceptions for rape or incest. Senate Bill 342 by Senator Katrina Jackson updates Louisiana's 2006 abortion trigger law and more than a dozen other prospective abortion restrictions in its product of lawmakers' close collaboration with the anti-abortion group, Louisiana Right to Life. The bill stiffens the criminal penalties for abortion providers already outlined in the state law, doubling the maximum sentences to 10 to 15 years depending on when abortion is preserved, uh, performed during the pregnancy. Yeah, so just no exception. Now, although... Uh, the actual bill does not outline any punishment towards the mother. Oftentimes, in practice, the mother is punished. It's a, it generally is supposed to uh, the punishment is supposed to go towards the the uh, healthcare provider who even allowed the procedure to take place or recommended it. But yeah, it's oftentimes used against the mother as well. So, 10 to 15 years, depending on it. So, let's just, uh, let's do something, let's do a little uh, thought experiment. So, average sentence uh, length for SA crimes in Louisiana. Whoever commits the crime of forcible SA will be imprisoned to hard labor for no less than 5 to 40 years. Hmm. Okay, so there is a chance that if someone was uh, assaulted in Louisiana, uh, was for forced to be pregnant, and they get an abortion, they would face a harder sentence, uh sentence than the actual person who assaulted them. In theory, if the person who gets the least you know, amount of sentence gets five years and the other person gets, you know, let's say they both get the minimum. 
the minimum that the assaulter will get will be 5 and the assaulted will get will be 10. That is ridiculous. Someone who did not want to raise the child of someone who quite possibly ruined their life, you know, they are now being punished for twice the amount of the person who ruined their life. You know, that's crazy. I saw this one tweet that said when uh, the punishment for getting an abortion is higher than the punishment for raping someone, something's wrong. And yeah, something is wrong. This, the reason why all of this came to light was because of the, the Dobbs versus uh, the Women's Health Organization in Jackson. What happened was they tried to pass a six-week uh, law, meaning you could not get an abortion past having, you know, being pregnant for six weeks. And that directly contradicted the 15-week that's kind of been the main thing around the U.S. So it went to the Supreme Court, of course where it was decided on by uh, Justices Alito, Clarence Thomas, Brent Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and the, the, the rest. And surprise, surprise, the Supreme Court came out in, in favor of Dobbs 6-3, to three, with all six conservative judges going... Poor Dobbs with all three liberal against. You know, big shocker there. And uh, even though the opinion piece came out and in uh, you know a couple months ago, and people thought that I they there's no way they're crazy enough to actually overturn it. They were. Kavanaugh and Coney Barrett. The whole reason why people said they would never overturn is because Kavanaugh and Coney Barrett had to say that man, we won't overturn this because it's been the law. For 50 years, let me in the Supreme Court and I won't overturn it. Well, they got let into the Supreme Court and they overturned it. After telling Susan Collins that Roe was settled law, Brent Kavanaugh calls it wrongly decided. Susan Collins is a representative from, uh, from Maine. She is a Republican, but she is against the the Roe v. Wade overruling. She was actually a deciding voice on whether Kavanaugh was even going to become a Supreme Court justice because uh, she was obviously split. And the only re reason why she went for him is because he said that he would never overturn it. Well, he didn't say that explicitly, but he said he wouldn't overturn Roe v. Wade. And that was the main reason why she went with him, right? And then he stabbed her in the back by overturning it. So, good on good good job. You know, there's not much really to say about this. I mean, there is, but I am not the most eloquent speaker. I am not the greatest scholarly legal mind. I can't go through the you know court documents and like pick part and reason and all of that. I'm just a guy with a camera and a a, a, a decent microphone and a somewhat choppish way of speaking so instead i'm going to give very layman's terms for why this is a bad thing this is bad because well this says sets a a possible precedent for a couple other things it's not likely that they're going to stop at roe v wade or abortion they're probably going to see this, take it, and run. Because, yeah, Roe v. Wade was not codified into law. Thank you, Democrats, for that. You know, thank you, RGB. Or RBG. <laughs> thank you. You, you. you do great with your emails and asking for money. So wonderful. But yeah, it was not codified into law, and it has, in fact, been sitting on a precedent, which is not great. But people generally thought that was safe enough because, you know, it's just the law, right? It's, it's, it's just the general practice of things. Well, yeah, it's clear that now stuff, even though common knowledge and all of that for a long time, 
if it's not codified into the Constitution, into federal law, it is fully capable of being overturned. And that is great news for the right, because now they can go after several other well-established practices that are not codified within the Constitution, namely gay marriage, contraceptives, the right to raise your kid how you see fit, uh, interracial marriages in several states. It's They're going to go after several things now, because now they know they can do it. Prime example, uh, we remember Mike Braun, who said that Roe v. Wade should be left up to the states, along with segregation and interracial marriage. But uh, let's, take a, let's take a newer take on this. So Senator John Cornyn said, now do Plessy v. Ferguson and Brown versus Board of Education. And he's replying to this tweet that says, today the Supreme Court not only reversed nearly 50 years of a precedent, it regularly the most intensely personal decisions someone can make to the whims of politicians and ideologues attacking the essential freedoms of Americans. Now, Republicans are saying that uh, he, he means that, oh, Supreme Court rulings can be overturned no matter what kind of president they set. It, remember how uh, Plessy versus Ferguson was talking about uh, how it's okay if it's segregated but equal and how Brown versus the Board of Education actually changed that years later? That's what he means. I don't buy it. Uh, I don't think anyone buys it, honestly, because uh, man got is currently getting ratioed to shit. And, yeah, uh, John Cornyn uh, doesn't have a, the greatest rate with uh, race relations. So for him to put that out kind of proves a point that uh, Brown versus Board of Education is also sitting on a press it's is sitting on a supreme court ruling so it can be reversed now what he pro he probably tweeted it out with the intention of saying that see stuff can be reversed see but i'm not going to tell you how which one i want reversed hmm. yeah he's uh he's a he's a sly little guy but yeah uh, you're also getting people who want, uh, who want Oberfell, or Obergfell, or, I don't, I never know how to pronounce that name, I've read it once. Uh, you get people wanting to, you know, overturn that now. Now it's time to overturn Obergfell. Thank you, Jaron Jackson. Thank you, man running for Oklahoma Congress. Thank you. Thank you for the literal shittiest meme I've ever seen in my life. The worst Photoshop I've ever seen. He's supposed to make the, the dots bigger, homie. He's supposed to make the eyes a little bit bigger. No, they absolutely want this stuff gone. You know? They're going to push and prod at everything they don't like. They because they already won once. Might as well take the mile and go. We, I think everyone just kind of already knew that that was going to be the case, that it was going to leave you know, doors wide open for a lot of things to happen, right? For a lot of things to, that were, has been legal and has been a guaranteed right for a long time is not necessarily going to be there for much longer. I think everyone just kind of softly knew that. It was always something that was in the back of our heads. But there is a big push already, you know? It's not even like a little conspiracy theory, you know? Conservatives will say, oh, you're just overreacting. That's a slippery slope argument. Uh, let's, 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 let's see about that. Supreme Court overruled Roe v. Wade on Friday, eliminating the constitutional right to abortion. The decision, authored by Justice Samuel Alito, reversed 50 years of precedent to return to the question of abortion rights back to the states. The ruling immediately impacts 26 states likely to move quickly immediately to ban abortion. Half of those states already have trigger laws set in place to ban it as soon as today. 
Experts worry that without the option of safe legal abortions, women will die as a result of unsafe terminations or pregnancy complications. The ruling also throws other fundamental rights into question in concurring opinion. Justice Clarence Thomas explicitly called on the court to reconsider rulings on contraception, marriage equality, and criminalization of same-sex relationships. Far-right activists were ecstatic with the ruling. They immediately began to look forward to enacting the rest of their agenda, eager to implement a nationwide ban of abortion, further Christian nationalism, and roll back LGBTQ rights and women's rights. Andrew Torba, the far-right Christian analogist founder of Gab, posted a meme that said, Goodbye to your abortions. Ooh. And an image of Justice Brett Kavanaugh with red lasers coming out of his eyes cor- accompanying it. Turbo followed a misogynistic celebration with the message that the Christian takeover of our Christian country has begun. Known for his anti-Semitism, he quickly went on to identify what else he wanted to ban. Next, he needed to ban the barbaric act of circumcisions, which also... Far-right congressional candidate Lauren Loomer who has said that her white nationalist views will help her get elected to Congress, managed to tie her white nationalism and anti-LGBTQ bigotry to overruling Roe. Forget about race-baiting holiday of Juneteenth. Today should be a national holiday instead, she wrote on Telegram. And I can't think of a better way to end a degeneracy of Pride Month than by overturning Roe v. Wade. All right. (laughs) Gay people kind of don't get pregnant. I guess they could. Men can't. Gay men can't get pregnant. Representative Paul Goser, who asked President Donald Trump for a pardon from January 6th, funny clip, honestly, was eager to give Trump, who nominated three uh, conservative justices to the Supreme Court, credit for overturning Roe. Goser claimed that there is still no, still so much more work to be done to return his country to God. Let's keep our momentum and push it forward for him. He tweeted, adding an emoji of a cross. He followed that tweet with a declaration of, we're just getting started. Welcome to the new right. Welcome to America first. Okay. Gosser is friendly with the white nationalist American first movement. Oh, boy. More, more, uh, he's a groiper. He's a groiper. So, yeah, clearly it's not some conspiracy theory. Especially since uh, Mr. Thomas, not justice, not in my mind, (laughs) no, that uh, Clarence Thomas is already wanting to look at uh, several other hearings and uh, how Roe will, how the overturning of Roe at the moment can be used to further their agenda. And yes, I do say that because this is a, an agenda. This is a religious conservative agenda. They want to push a certain belief system and lifestyle on the entirety of the country. There is no doubt about that. This is not something like, oh, we believe this is for the good of the people. No, this is this is what's good for God. You know? But they're already... They're probably going to uh, look at uh, Obergefell very soon. And who knows what else after that. They may even look into Loving v. Virginia, which is for straight people, you know, funnily enough. But it's a racial relationship. Anyway, but at the moment, they're just looking at Roe v. Wade, and they're going to look at how that's going to affect contraceptives, which, yes, Roe v. Wade can affect that, and uh, same-sex sex. Because Roe v. Wade also does protect that. Roe v. Wade was about more than abortions. It was uh, guaranteed the right to privacy. And now that right is gone. So abortion, although being the forefront of that uh, present, is not the only thing it protected. So contraceptives are also on the chopping block. They are already on the chopping block within my state, within Louisiana, Alabama, and Tennessee, and Possibly Arkansas. So that's several states already. Meaning, Plan B may not even be a thing. Condoms may not even be a thing. That's a little bit extreme, granted, but it's possible. We thought the overturning of Roe would be extreme. So 
it could be, it's entirely likely that it could happen. Especially in states that already take a very poor look at proper sex education. So, yes, all contraceptives could now be on the chopping block. Probably just a few at first, but all are likely to be affected. So condoms, uh, actual uh, medical devices, IEDs, uh, plan B, spermicide, all of that, all of that could, uh, well, not spermicide, but whatever. <laughs> yes, all of that is now at a risk for just being illegal. And we know how bans work. We know what happens with that. You ban condoms, people are going to duct tape trash bags on their dick because people are going to fuck, right? People are going to have sex. It never stops. You know, abortion, if abortion bans worked, why are all the states with the, wor you know, with the strictest abortion laws the ones with the highest teen pregnancy, right? Yeah. People aren't happy with the decision, right? People don't like what, where this can go to say the least. Because it's so possible that we're going to lose a lot of the things that we just thought of as human rights. You know, gay marriage could be gone. Raising your kid how you see fit could be gone. Interracial marriage could be gone. Condoms could be gone. All of this is possible now because of this. If Roe was upheld, none of these would be a question. However, everything sits on a level of, an, of uncertainty now. Because now they know. They know that rulings can be changed without having popular opinion. And now there's six to three. So if they just form solid conservative blocks and solid liberal blocks from now on, they could just pass whatever they want. And they know that. And who knows where they're going to go with this. I certainly don't know. I had a feeling that they were going to overturn Roe, but I still thought they weren't going to do it because I didn't think anyone would be that crazy. Especially two people whose career you know, careers as justices were made at, at basically saying we weren't going to overturn it. They were guaranteed the position because they said they were going to uphold it, and then they lied. Because, of course, they did. They played dirty. But, again, everything seems at a level of uncertainty. But there is hope, you know. Uh, of course, now Democrats are pushing out emails and fund campaigns and all of that saying, vote, donate, please give us money and recognition. God, we need it. Pay up. If you want if you want your, your human rights to be saved, pay up. And uh, yeah, I hate them for that because they've had decades to codify it into law. They've had decades to codify several things into law. But well, they didn't because they've just held it over our heads. It's like, ooh, if Republicans win, you'll, you'll get your abortion taken away. And even though now we sit at a, a Democrat-held legislation branch, uh, legislative branch, executive branch, but not Supreme Court, it shows that uh, it didn't matter. That voting for them didn't matter because they didn't do shit. I will say... I will continue to say, please, please go and vote blue. Vote, but not just president and whatever. Vote for anyone who's pro-abortion on all levels. You know, not pro-abortion, but pro-choice, you know. <laughs> pro-abortion rights, I guess. But yeah. Go vote blue on local levels, all of that. You know, find people you agree with everywhere the right is good at this they they are able to put people wherever they want on school boards as sheriffs as fucking fire chiefs they're good at this us lefties and liberals are not where we do shit at it because we just seem to care about the big stuff like our our president possibly our senators and representatives so 
be sure to go out to your, you know, your districts, vote for people who you believe in, whose candidacy, you know, would think would benefit your local area, as in your town, your county, your state, your country. Go and vote. Please go and do that. But also, protest. Sign petitions. Don't sign petitions at protests. Don't do that. Uh, that's, that's not good. Sign them at home. <laughs> sign them at home. But yes, go protest. Go pressure the politicians that are already in office. Show them that this is unpopular. Show them that their careers can and will suffer from not listening to what, you know, the people they govern want. You know, go do that. Go donate to funds. Go raise awareness. Go buy contraceptives while you can. Go spread information of how, you know, of how to combat this as in, you know, any piece of information that could be helpful. Go and do all of that. Don't just rely on voting and don't just rely on protests because one without the other doesn't really amount to much at the end of the day. Because if you have a conservative in office, they're less likely to listen to your, your protests and your petitions than a Democrat would is sad but true you know there's no there's no doubt about that so yes go go do the things please i'm going to do them i I want you to too but be safe and all of that of course i want all of you to be safe i love i love i love you all i want you all to be safe